Today I'm here at Earthsong where over the past five weeks, I was able to film and document the entire construction of this cob house behind me. In this tutorial series, I'll be doing my best to teach you guys step-by-step step all of the processes that we went through to build this cob house. And I'll also be trying to share some of the moments that made this experience transformative for many of us here. In this video, we'll be meeting the instructors from the workshop, Josh and Paula, who will be taking us through a walkthrough of the building, as well as a basic overview of the processes that we went through from the foundation to the roof. In the next episode, we'll be diving straight into the foundation. So be sure to subscribe if you're enjoying these videos. And now let's meet Josh and Paula. I'm Josh Berg. And I'm Paula Carneiro. And we're here at Earthsong, which is a, uh, a beautiful property in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. It's a place uh, that some of our friends have acquired that want to start doing regenerative farming, natural building, and healing workshops um, in order to build community and prosper. And we have just accomplished a five-week workshop for Prison Cop Global, where we built this beautiful home. So I've been doing um, conventional construction for a better part of, of, of a decade. I discovered Cobb and natural building pretty late in life and it happened at a time when I was becoming disillusioned by the toxicity and the, the lack of soul in uh, conventional building. Our build over the last six weeks here has been a perfect example of how when you get people together with a common purpose that want to help each other grow and create, that you end up with something absolutely marvelous, which is the building right behind me. I'm a professional artist that graduated in dance school, and I'm, I'm Brazilian. I took my first uh, workshop with Claudine Desiree in Brazil, where I met Nayana and Priscilla, who are now my partners on our all-women collective called Moça Barro, or Clay Gals, how we like to say in English. And I didn't know that I could build a house dancing, by dancing, by movement. And that's something that really led me into this world. And also coping with the natural materials and having my gesture printed uh, in a way to, to grow a house in organic shapes and having all this movement uh, in order to create a um, place to live with a lot of art. So I'm holding a bread of cob right now that we made in a tarp, mixing with our feet and hand. And it's made out of sand, clay and straw. The sand is the structural um, piece of it with uh, the strength of the material. The clay is what bonds it together, uh, is the glue. And the straw is what connects everything in order to make the whole house a single piece so it doesn't have separation between the materials. So what's beautiful about cob is that it's shapeable to whatever form you like. It doesn't have a previous form that you have to fit into, but you can literally play with it and sculpt what you were willing to build. With Cobb, you take something that is completely formable to whatever dreams your brain can create. And it also has the strength and the, all the elements that are needed for a traditionally strong and healthy home. But then you can create art out of it, you know? And you can't do this with uh, more conventional materials. So it really changed my whole perspective on what building could be uh, when I made the jump from conventional to Cobb and I think about building as a whole different process now.
Before we start building, we need to choose the correct place and orientation of the house uh, that we choose to build. So uh, for here, we chose a place that has a slight slope so we avoid the valleys just because the flood water is the cob's only enemy. You cannot soak this house, but of course if it's raining and the water splashes in the wall, it doesn't do any harm. Um, and uh, the orientation of the sun, which in the northern hemisphere, we want to face south. So we can take advantage of the sunlight and sun heat. And considering that the sun in the winter is moving uh, lower than when it's summertime. So that's when we want uh, to get the most heat from the sun. Because the cob is, has thermal mass, which makes it thermal passive, that means that the cob walls absorb and releases heat very slowly. These walls respire and and uh, let go of moisture from them instead of containing it. So you're left with a building that regulates humidity naturally and a building that absorbs and releases heat and, and maintains a steady temperature inside. And it supports a roof, an extremely heavy roof. This roof is a green roof, so it has a soil layer on it. It's uh, thousands of pounds, probably around 5,000 pounds. And these walls, even though they're built from just sand, clay, and straw, support that load. That's, to me, as someone who thinks about the safety of a building, it was stunning the first time I saw uh, a, a mud wall holding a roof like this, and something that I've been um, continually amazed by. So once you have your plan and your design of the house, your place chosen, it's time to start digging the earth, the soil, and build your foundation, which is um, starts below the ground on top of a, of a drainage. And then we cope with these pretty old ladies called rocks. <laughs> That's uh, kind of start in the hardest part, which is coping with this solid uh, material that's unlike the cob, it's not shapeable. So they bring us to shape ourselves and so we need to be flexible in order to cope with them. So we need to choose our rocks and change and flip them in, in many ways so they can fit together. So this is all dry stacked, which means that everything here is held by gravity. So those are wise witches <laughs> that teach us to, to be flexible in order to cope with all this hardness that is very desirable as a foundation, as a, the basis of our house. So after our foundation wall was built, it was time to get into the main, main event of a cob workshop, which is building your walls. We are fortunate here in the Blue Ridge Mountains that we have this gorgeous clay that we excavated straight out of the ground to form the site for this build. Um, as you can see, it's beautiful red clay soil and we only had to amend it with uh, some sand that we brought from pretty close by. What is interesting about when Cobb begins in this workshop, that's when the fun begins also. So that's when we are dancing more, we are moving and helping each other and throwing the Cobb the uh, breads to, in limes and put them on the wall. So that's when we actually learn how to shape it in the best way so that we can have these structural walls done and strong glass as it is and so we are stepping the cob uh, on the tarps and so we are filling all the materials within our bodies and getting our feet muddy all uh, ourselves muddy our clothes and everything <laughs> and it's a beautiful connection with the materials we have and that's a beautiful opportunity that natural building brings to us where we can be all covered with the materials that we are building and building and having this line so we can toss the breast to each other 
and eventually it hits someone, it, it falls on the ground, and it's fun, it's fun. So we start putting them on the wall and shaping with our hands and in a way that we little by little get to this intimacy with the material. So here we are standing inside this beautiful cob cottage. Um, the walls look nothing like any other material really because you can add incredible pieces of art right into the wall itself without jeopardizing any of the structural integrity. This gives you the opportunity to create art with light. Um, we've strategically placed a lot of these bottles embedded in the wall towards sides of the building that have a lot of light coming through. So as you can see over there, we have green and brown bottles that project the, the sunlight from the sunset. Um, and then over here, we have some bottles placed in a different orientation on there um, going vertically. And we filled them with uh, hibiscus tea which is a red, red colored tea and it's been, and it never settles. So you're left with a beautiful red tint for the life of the bottle. Um, here's a window and uh, this window started off as a, 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 a rectangle and then we were able to sculpt it into an oval. You can do so many different things with this material that you can't do with anything else. Um, and it gives you just such freedom to really build whatever you think would look amazing. And guess what? The floor is also made out of earth, so which is really cool. And of course, we have a separation layer with the gravel, so that, uh, as I always say in the workshop, the earthen walls or earthen floor materials cannot touch the ground. And that's a very hard day because there is a tight schedule in order to, to accomplish this building in five weeks. So to, to make the floor, the first layer of, of floor is a lot of material, uh, bringing gravel also into the mixture, which makes it heavier and a lot of coordination between the teams. Um, loading these wheelbarrows and throwing them into the ground and leveling them up. So um, it's a day where we cannot stop and we need to be like really concentrated. It's quite a challenge that we really got, uh, we thrived to, to, to accomplish. Um, but it requires a lot of cooperation and concentration on the tasks on, and timing of the whole day. Going into sculpture week is our, or the sculpture days is a huge relief for most students because we have just finished putting cob at the highest part of the wall. It's extremely intense and, and exhausting. And then we transition into this couple days of pure imagination and artistic expression and oftentimes that's when we see some students really shine. I mean their innermost uh, imagination comes out and then is manifested onto the walls and this is what makes building with cob unlike any other material. The fact that you can literally print your imagination into the walls themselves. That was when the creativity and we also see all these talents of the students just rising up and show, revealing themselves. So after we done the sculptures, there comes the beautifying uh, time of the plaster, which is a really nice week, uh, more chill the plaster is light to do and that's when all that uh, all those walls they looked like with a lot of holes and straws coming out looking kind of messy then you can really see the shape and and brings this smoothness and flatness to the walls so we are now looking at the amazing architecture of a reciprocal roof. So we've harvested these, these timbers from the property here. Um, 
As you can see, there are 10 primary rafters that all intersect, forming a giant skyline at the top. Um, you can see primary, 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 and then the secondary is resting on them. And the whole thing is held together at every connection by threaded rod um, and nuts and washers. Um, the beauty of a reciprocal roof is that you don't need any structural support inside the building. So you have the walls which are holding the ends of the, of the primaries and then they all support themselves by overlapping in the middle. So the final phase of uh, building our Cobb home was adding an extensive living roof. Um, I think these roofs fit a Cobb home really well because they kind of blend the building into the uh, surrounding environment. Uh, it's covered by the native soil here um, and we dug it straight out of the hillside and then added it to the roof. Uh, it was really fulfilling watching our students get comfortable with being at heights and, and the challenges of being up here if they've never worked um, on a roof before. But at the same time it was kind of bittersweet because as we closed the workshop and started to finish up the green roof, you know, we all had it inside of us that this was coming to an end, that five weeks of living together, working together, doing this incredibly hard thing together, uh, which culminates with a very new experience for most of them being up here, building a roof. All of that was closing and coming to an end. But I like to think that, you know, as things end, new beginnings emerge. And we saw the seeds sprout on the roof um, right as we closed up the workshop just like the futures of our new students were germinating and all of our new paths were beginning. Um, so it has some kind of poetic elements to it um, as we kind of, you know, said our sad farewells. We saw, we saw the seeds start to sprout of our futures, which are um, definitely gonna be intertwined. <laughs> so uh, building a cob house is and doing a workshop like this is a much bigger experience than just the technical side of learning how to do it. It's really an act against, uh, rebelling against the, the forces that divide us in this world. So all I can say is if you're feeling um, alone out there, you're feeling like, you know, you see the world evolving into this place that you don't want it to be, do something, get involved with natural building, come to a workshop, you will feel healed from it. And it has happened, we've seen it countless times, and I can't explain to you how much growth occurs during these processes. Yeah, and I feel like the process of building a house is more about the house revealing itself because it's so collective and with a lot of puttings and ideas from everyone. And then at the end, we realized that what we were really building is ourselves, our strength, our confidence within ourselves. Um, we are mostly told that this is a specialized sort of work. Before I took my workshop, I didn't even imagine I could be, I could build a house uh, myself. I'm a dancer, I came from another background, and that's totally possible. It's very intuitive. So all of our knowledge, man, about cooking, about dancing, about moving, about art craft, or whatever you have in your life can be brought together into a construction like this. So it's really beautiful to see that anyone can put their talents into building with Earth. If you are interested in going to this adventure, you can keep your eye on Cruising Cop Global News for further workshops all around the world. And we as Mosa Barro Collective also have uh, workshops mainly in Brazil and you can also have this experience either going through all this process building a house from scratch to a green roof and sculpting and all of this or there are also smaller workshops where you can get involved with this technique so follow us at cruisingcobglobal.org 
and our Instagrams, they'll be in the description. Um, if you're at all interested, please reach out. We'd, be, we'd love to have you at one of, these, uh, one of these events, and it will be a positive change in your life, I can guarantee it. Come along. <laughs>